As we get started this morning, I just want to ask a few questions. Are we living? Are we really living or are we just existing? Are we living the life to the foe or is it just status quo? What are we consumed with in our lives? Are we consumed with work? Is it sports? Are we just plain busy? Are we consumed with family? Or are we consumed with death? Are we consumed with the news? Are we consumed with what ifs and the election? Are we consumed with all the trouble around the world? Because what we focus on most, hear me, what we focus on most, truth is, what we consume our mind and our heart with will determine the state of our lives. Are we consumed with Jesus and living out the life that he has for us? Scripture tells us if we put God's kingdom first, he will take care of everything else. What consumes your mind and your heart? See, God is the God of the mountaintop. He's the God of the valley. And he's God over it all. And whether we are on the mountaintop or we're buried under the mountain, God is God of it all. And no matter where we are, no matter what is going on, hear me, God's desire is to breathe life into you. Because that's who he is. He's the God of life. He can't do anything else. He's not the God of death. Those thoughts and those situations and circumstances come from the enemy. That's why Jesus came. He's the God of life. He came to be resurrected to show you that you will live eternally in Christ, in Jesus. What are we going to dwell on? Are we going to dwell on the things we see around us? Are we going to dwell on what the doctors are telling us? Or are we going to dwell on and enjoy this day because he made it for you? If you are breathing and you have life today, he created you and this day for you to enjoy and to live. It is your time to live. we got to get that into our hearts and minds. We're so consumed with what's going on around us that we're missing the very gift of God. Worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. Worried what's going to happen next week. Worried about what's going to happen next month. That we're missing the present. It's a present from God the day that we have today. Our life will look like what we consume it with. John 10.10 10 tells us the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to give us life in the fullness of time. Hear me, in the fullness of time. It is throughout time that we will experience, hear me, all things. All things. And God has a great story. God wants to give us a great story to live out in our lives. A story to change us for the good. Hear me. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to make a way for you. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you will focus in on him, he's got the plan. A story that will change us. A story that will change others. A story to touch us and others. Let me tell you, it was other people's stories of how they experienced God that changed my life. Because I was not experiencing God. I was not in a place to experience God. I didn't even know that I needed to experience God until what happened? I experienced God. I was reminded today about how blessed I am to have a grandson. But you know something? I didn't miss him because I didn't know I had him until I had him. It's like I forgot what I remembered. I forgot I remembered. It's one of those things. Sometimes we don't realize what we have until God opens our eyes to the fullness of time. It says God breathes life into us. That's what being a Christian is all about. Living out the fullness through time of God's story in our life. But hear me, guys. we got to be willing to exchange our plans for his plans. We must be willing to exchange our story 
for his story. Living out the Christian life does not happen in one day. It's not a one and you're done. You've got to be in it for the long haul because there's going to be times in the valley, there's times under the mountain, and there's times of those mountain experiences. And you're going to go through it either way. You've got a choice. The promise of God is that I'll go through it with you. I'll make a way through you. I'll make sure that you end up on the mountaintop no matter how far down you are. Because you know what's interesting? When you're down at the bottom, when you're under the mountain, you're never alone. See, God just doesn't want to save you. He wants to save the ones with you. He wants to save the ones that you can reach by your story. Do you hear me? Daryl's not going through this alone. I'll bet Ron didn't even know Daryl was going through the exact same thing. But he came to church and he found out, hey, guess what? I'm not alone. But you know what's interesting? God used one woman to contact me about both of them. And I knew neither about neither one of them. One woman called me and said, hey, would you give this guy a call? So sure enough, I did. And then I called and said, hey, I had a great conversation, prayed with him. And she contacts me back and says, oh, by the way, Ron Miller's going through the same thing. I said, oh, my God. So I sent a note, and guess what? Ron and out of here. Because, see, God doesn't want Ron going through it alone. God doesn't want Daryl going through it alone. But, see, one woman had to be obedient to what she heard God tell her to do. Isn't that right, Kathy? <laughs> it ain't hard. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not hard. All you have to do, it's all about people. It's all about telling your story. It's all about when God puts it on your heart to contact somebody, to just do it. It's funny, I was texting Kathy back and forth. She's like, yeah, I'm on my way to take banana bread to Maggie. I kind of chuckled to myself. I go, oh, I know Maggie's going to enjoy that. I'm just telling you guys, it's just availing ourselves to being able to hear from God and just do it. You know, God formed the whole world with his words. We can change the whole world with our words. With our words. The plan of God comes into our lives by doing the little things every day. By being consistent every day over time. As God breathed life into us through the fullness, hear me, the fullness of time. I'm going to read to you from scripture what the fullness of time is. It's from the Classics 3, 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be quiet, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time for peace. In other words, we're going to go through all these things, and we will experience all these things through different seasons. The promise of God is you never have to go through it alone. He will send people to you if you'll accept Him, He will be with you through all things. Here's the thing, though. He loves us so much, he gives us a choice. We can go through these seasons alone, sometimes stuck, sometimes angry, sometimes overwhelmed. Or we can go through them with God, learning how to experience God through every aspect of life, hear me, death, and resurrection. If you have breath in your body, it's your time to live. It's your time to live. It's your time to experience God in and through all things. To live the abundant life that Jesus hung on the cross for you. So that you're not caught up in the past. You're not caught up in death. That's why he hung on the cross. He hung on the cross so that your past sins do not hinder you, hold you, or stop you from anything he's called you to do. Or for anything that you want to do. He resurrected so that death would have no hold on you. Death, where is your sting? He resurrected to show you what would happen when you die, if you're in Christ. You are resurrected. There's nothing that holds you back unless you choose to. 
The life we live depends on what we're consumed with. Are we consumed with these seasons or are we consumed with Jesus who has overcome all things? Are we consumed with Jesus who made a way for us through all things, even death? Though I walk through the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are what? With me. You are with me. I remember talking to Judy a few weeks ago. She said to me, she says, I've been through H-E double hockey sticks. I don't know how people do it without Jesus. Jesus got me through it. How do they do it without Jesus? Yet there are many out there that do. Unfortunately, there are many out there with Jesus that have closed their heart because they've been hurt so bad that they're missing out because they're consumed with brokenness. Though I walk through the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is why we need Jesus. He is the God of it all. He's the God that can make all things right. He's the God of the mountaintop. He's the God of the valley. And hear me, he's made a way for you personally. He chose, even though he knew everything you would go through, he chose to create you anyway. He knew every mistake you would make. He chose to create you anyways. I don't know about you, but some of us have children, some of us have grandchildren, and really shook our heads like holy smokes. But you know what? Where are they today? They've been through a whole lot, but where are they today? What are they experiencing today? Maybe they're not on that mountaintop yet, but you keep praying and you keep believing, and God will make a difference. God will honor you as a parent. God will honor you as a grandparents. You don't think I don't pray life over my kids? I pray life over my kids and grandkids. I'm telling you, I pray over them no matter where they are, no matter what they're going through. And let me tell you something, there's times that they're whoo, smoking. Maybe grandson got to go to church last week for the first time. So did my son for the first time in a while. But you know what? I called him last night and said, hey, you guys going back? Uh, yeah, we're going. <laughs> but God put that in my heart to do that. Because I understand by what I've experienced. I've walked where there was no God. I went through death where there was no God. And let me tell you something. I don't ever want to do that again. I am so grateful and thankful for the God that came and saved me. He's made a way for us to live as overcomers as we hear me, as we're consumed with him. It's all in our mindset. I'm telling you right now, the enemy is going to come. I guarantee he's come against Ron. He's come against Daryl. He's come against Daryl's family to say, this is it. Death is going to overtake you. Fear. You don't serve the God of fear and death. How many times did Jesus say, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not? It's through our brokenness. You know, last time I was here, I talked about finishing well, even when we're broken. It's through our brokenness that our story becomes part of God's story. Because we are no longer the author of our story as we literally put down the pen and allow God to rewrite our story. I don't know that's true in my life. I guarantee you, believe me. After 30 years of writing my own story, I was like, yeah, one ditch to the next ditch to the next ditch to the next ditch. I was glad to put the pen down. Let God finish this thing up. And let me tell you something, he's, as far as I'm concerned, he's done a great job. But I'll tell you what, I would have never been to the places that he's taken me on my own. I would never go to prison to hang out. Just wasn't on my bucket list. <clears throat> But yet, that's where God takes me. That's where he leads me. I probably would have never come to South Pekin. But yet, here I am, loving every minute of Do you know I woke up at 2 this morning and I could not go back to sleep? Could not. Went to the bathroom, thought, ah, no problem. I got four more hours. 3 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30. I might as well just get up. But I knew where I was going. And I knew that God had a powerful message for me to encourage you. And he confirmed it when we read the first, the first song. I was like, oh my God, God, you are so good. Mark 5, 1 through 5 tells us, Jesus and his disciples went across the lake 
When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. See, this man has been condemned to death and the grave. Literally, he's consumed with death in a cemetery. And that is exactly what the enemy wants to do to him. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do to each one of us in one form or another. Hear me. Many people live in their own self-imposed prisons by one word. What? Two words. If. What if this happens? What if that happens? It's like the saying, dead man walking. We're dead a long time before we're ever dead. We're dead with the what ifs. But what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? You see, Jesus has a plan for our lives to give us an abundant life. Jesus hung on the cross so no, no matter what, even death, we shall live. Jesus, hear me, he is the key to life for now and eternity, John 10, 9-11 tells us, I am the gate, speaking of Jesus. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and they will find life. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, in the fullness of time. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And Jesus literally, he comes to the tombs, to the place of death for this man, to bring this man out of his past, to bring this man out of death, and to bring this man into life, all so this man can rewrite his story. Are we stuck in past hurts? Are we stuck in brokenness? <clears throat> Ask Jesus to help you move on. He's the only one that can do it because he's the God of life, and he wants you to live or you would not have woken up this morning. He's got a plan to use you right in your brokenness because there are tons of people around you that are broken that do not have what you have. Buried on the inside of you. Buried under that mountain. And he's saying, come on, child. I want you on the top living where I predestined you to live. Yes, I know you've been through some pain and heartache and some brokenness. But child, I want to use you. I want you to bring every one of them that are under that mountain with you to the top. And your story will do it. But first of all, you got to find me. And I'm not underneath there. I may be there with you, but I want to take you to the top. I want you to live. Child, I want you to live. And we have to get that in our hearts no matter how old we are, no matter what we're going through. If you're alive, God wants you to live. Life. Verse 6. When he saw Jesus from a distance and he ran and he fell on his knees in front of him, the demon inside of him shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herds of pigs were feeding and on a nearby hillside, the demon begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. Verse 13, Jesus gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man that was full of death. They saw the man who had been possessed by legions of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and also told them about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him go, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis, which is 10 cities, 
how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. See, the story tells us about a man who's living in the tombs in a cemetery. He's surrounded by death and suffering every day. And he is in that suffering. I'm sure he was not having that mountaintop experience. He was literally crying out to God nightly, needing God to intervene, needing God to breathe new life to him. Is there anyone here that just needs God to breathe new life into you? Scripture tells us that Jesus goes into the cemetery, the place of the dead. He met this man in his place of the dead where this man lived among the tombs and the enemy had surrounded him with death. Anybody here feel like the enemy has surrounded you with death? Jesus shows up by boat with the disciples for only one reason. One reason. Jesus is always about the one, and Jesus is always about you. You personally. He hung on the cross for you personally. If you were the only person here, he came and hung on the cross for you. That's literally how personal Jesus takes it. The man may be living among the dead, but it's not his time to die. It is his time to live by experiencing God. But he's got to, hear me, he's got to experience God. He's got to be consumed with God. He's got to go and he's got to come to God. And scripture tells us that he literally had 2,000 demons in him that were trying to keep him from Jesus. And he literally drags these 2,000 demons to the foot of Jesus and falls. I can't imagine how hard that was. But he knew where the answer was. He knew how to get his deliverance. He knew how to live. And that was to get to the foot of the cross, to the foot of Jesus. And he does and he is delivered I tell you today if you are hearing this message it is not your time to die there's no accident you're here Ron no accident God loves you that much it's not your turn if it was you wouldn't be here because you had every right in your own mind to be talked out of it and go somewhere else but you didn't because God wanted to speak to you he loves you son he loves you he gave you a beautiful woman and he loves you. And it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. This man may be living among the dead, but it's all not his time to die. It's his time to live by experiencing God. And I tell you today, if you're hearing this message, it's not your time. It's your time to experience God. Show up in this man's brokenness to bring life, to bring life into him. It's all about living every day that we have. Hear me, guys. If we only have a week, I don't know about you, but if I didn't know that I had a week, I would hope that I would live that week. Hear me. Praising God. Do you think that there's a reason why we don't know our death date? How many times do you think we would die? How, many, how depressed would we be? How many days would we lose? See, God, he, he, he's so full of wisdom. He doesn't let us know. I don't know about you, but if I'm going to hit, hit a bus, if I a bus next week, I don't want to know. But I also, I want to live every day that I have in the love and the goodness of God. I want to be used by God. I don't want to look back and think, oh man, I just spent the last month depressed about something that doesn't even matter. Because I was all worried about something else. I don't know about you, but I have today to live and I want to live it to the fullest. I don't want my past. I don't want any brokenness. I don't want any of that to hold me back for what God has today. That's why he hung on the cross so that you could live life. We may not be living in cemeteries, but for some of us, maybe we're living in dead places. In our minds and in our hearts. We're consumed with what's going on in the world. We're consumed with what's happened in the past. We're consumed with lost loved ones. To the point we're not able to live the life God has for us. And that, hear me, is exactly where the enemy wants you. He wants you trapped in the past. He wants you trapped in dead places. He wants you trapped in depression. Consumed and distracted from God and the life God has for you. Once again, I ask, what is consuming your thoughts and your hearts today? See, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil God has a future for us. If we'll step out of the grave clothes, hear me, if we'll step out of the grave clothes and choose to live out God's story. Jesus tells this man how to live out God's story. First of all, he had to leave the dead place. He says, leave this dead place. He had to leave the dead behind. Go home and tell everyone what God has done for you. 
Go home and tell your story of how experiencing God's story has changed your life and you will live out God's plan for your life. We must not underestimate the power of telling others a story of experiencing God. God is always about the one. God is always about the lost one. And God is always about the one who is hurting. Sometimes we just need to leave the dead places in our lives. Sometimes we just need to leave the past in our past. Quit digging it up. You can't change it. You can't do anything about it. Jesus already did something about it. He hung on the cross. He did something about your past. He did something about the dead. It's done. If you don't have a story of experiencing God, hear me, maybe it's time you ask God for an experience. Maybe it's time you ask God for a story. Ask yourself, who out there needs your story? Who needs to hear how God breathed life into you? Who needs to hear how God got us through when we were stuck? There are many out there that need our stories and our prayer. Hear me, guys. God had a message of hope for you personally. It's no accident that you were here. No accident. God knows every aspect of your life. He knows every tear. He knows every brokenness. And he knows every fear. And he brought you here today because he wanted to breathe life into you. Because he wants you to breathe life into those around you. And like I said, it, it's not complicated. It's not hard. He will put things in your heart to do. And sometimes they're hard to do. Usually because of our own pride. Usually it's our own pride. It's our pride. Because see, he wants you to reach out to someone that you may have conflict with. You may have an issue with. But you know what? Your story is probably the story that will change them. Maybe you just reaching out to them will change them. Maybe that will show them the power of God by being humble with humility and just saying, well, you know, you can justify it to yourself any way you want, but just be obedient. I'll do this because God's telling me. That's okay. Don't tell them that. <laughs> I'm just here because God told me to be here. I'm not happy about it, but I'm here. Do you know what's interesting? God can work with that. God can work with that. If you'll just get to where you need to be, he can work with that. Let me tell you something. Some of those guys in the Bible, believe me, they weren't there because they wanted to be there. I promise you that. It wasn't like, ooh, this is going to be a good time. Let's go hang out in the stocks and the prisons. This is going to be fun. But God wants to use you powerfully. He wants to use you powerfully. And I just want to close with this thought. Will you just ask God today, am I really living? Is there more? And how do I do it? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you praise and thanks for another beautiful day of life, Lord. I want to thank you for each and every one of these uh, people that have come today. Father, I pray for their hearts. I pray for the dead places of my own heart, but I also pray for the dead places of their hearts, Father. May you bring life to all things, all situations, and all circumstances. And Lord, I ask that your peace would rest upon them, that your healing touch would rest upon them.